Wait, you ready? All right, me too. So my my first question is, when did you start acting, and how did you know you wanted to pursue it as a career? Well, um, my parents put me into acting when I was a kid, so I was like very very young, and they started putting me into commercials and some film and television auditions, and just giving me like I was like six, seven, uh, putting me into acting classes and stuff like that. I was just a, probably really theatrical child. I think I needed a lot of attention from people. So I'm sure they were like, we'll put her in there. That'll help that. And, um, and then my mom actually pulled me out of it. Um, when I was like eight years old, cause she felt like it was a destructive industry and she didn't like what she was seeing by like other stage moms and all that kind of stuff. And she didn't want that. And so she pulled me out. And then uh, when I actually moved to Montreal to go to university at Concordia, I just realized I, I do want to do that. That's what I want. And so I started auditioning there and booking roles, and that was kind of like, that was it for me. I was like, well, I want this. <laughs> wow. So there was a yeah. really long stint from eight years old to then university. Um, yeah. Right. So what were you doing in between that? Were you not doing any acting at all, like plays or nothing? Yeah, no, like, you know, here and there, like, I would do, uh, you know, like, high school stuff or, you know, things around, like, short film stuff like that. I would still be in acting class because mm -hmm. I just loved it. Yeah. But it was always like, oh, if you want to be an actor, you should have a backup plan, yeah. you know? It's always, it's not like one of those things where people are like, oh, yeah, go do that. Like, enjoy that struggle for the rest of your life, <laughs> you know? Right, right. So, I mean, that's why I went to university was, like, the backup plan, go and get a degree. And then, you know, you just kind of have to really, it didn't really feel right, like, in my heart, in my gut. I knew it wasn't what I wanted. So, yeah. you kind of have to go off the beaten track and just do what you want. Absolutely, no, for sure. <laughs> Um, yeah. so you, like, I, I really do resonate with your mom's kind of plight. I mean, she's smart to, to understand that the business is really scary and there are a lot of scary players in the business. And especially for an eight year old girl, eight year old child, it's, it's, it, it can be dangerous, you know? Um, yeah. There was the one yeah. moment that my mom said that there was like the moment that she decided to pull me out. Mm -hmm. It was at a commercial audition and it was like seven, eight and all the kids go in together and half the kids came out crying, and sh and I came out sobbing, and she didn't understand why. And the kids that um, were going to get picked for the next round were all given candy, and the kids that weren't were given nothing. So I felt like I had failed my mom and failed everybody, and I wasn't chosen, and I didn't get a candy. And I was like, that's just so evil. A little warped, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, a little warped reward system. That's terrible. That's It was terrible. She's like, I'm done. She's like, yeah. you're out. That's it. <laughs> Good for your mom. So, so you go to Concordia, and what, were, what was your degree there? What did you get your degree in? What would you? Uh, well, I didn't get my degree. Okay. I, I was in English literature, and then I started acting, and so I stopped. Nice. <laughs> Terrible. I hate saying that, but uh, but yeah, I was uh, I was just like I wasn't really sure why I was there. I wanted to yeah. learn. I wanted to like you know to. I really wanted to be a writer at some point. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, it just, the acting bug just kind of took hold of me and grabbed its claws, so. Right. So, yeah. uh, did you stay in Montreal to pursue acting first, or did you go back to Vancouver? Like, what'd you do then? Yeah, I stayed for, I think I stayed for, like, maybe a year or so. I was there probably a total of four years. Nice. Um, and then I came back to Vancouver, and that's when I kind of had a really, like, hard time. I, like, really struggled with whether or not I was good enough for this mm -hmm. industry. Like what it was sometimes you your self worth can really get uh, wrapped up in, in this industry I find. It's like if you go on auditions and you and you don't book it as opposed to being like, that's okay, the next one, it can like tear at you and like tear you down. And so I kind of never had two feet fully in. I always was doing other stuff. I had like my toe in acting and I, I knew I wanted to do it, but I didn't believe in myself enough for a really long time. So I think that's why if you like look at my MTV, it's like a credit and then there's like years of absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden in the last two years is when I was like, okay, like it's time if you want to do this, like you could go balls out. Like that's all you have to do. And like do the hustle, do it. And so that's when things started really happening for me. So talk about that a little more. What actually was that moment that gave you the encouragement or like inspired you to be confident and pursue it like full fledged, you know? Well, I think a lot of it actually has to do with just getting older. I know that sounds weird, but like 
liking myself or mm. loving myself where I like I didn't before mm. and just really knowing what my values are and like the reasons why I'm in this industry mm. I think before it was like a uh, validation or you know like if you want something from other people but now I don't need anything from anybody else this is, I'm here because I want to tell compelling stories. I want to show the world, you know, pieces of life that maybe they, they don't see or, you know, explore exciting characters, all those things. And as opposed to be famous. And I think that I probably started with that intention and that's why I left. And now I'm like just a more grounded human. That's so, no, yeah. yeah, I completely understand that. Um, it, the, the industry can take a toll on anybody, you know what I mean? Even if you have the thickest of skin, it's, it literally, I mean, the candy thing doesn't happen anymore, but like there is those instances still at our age, like, you know what I mean? Like the praise to one actor or not. Um, yeah. that's so, so what was your first role? What, what was the first role you've ever booked? Like your first TV or film role? Oh my God. Um, I, go I think archives. Uh, I'm like, I'm like going back in my head. I think it was probably on um, this show. It was called The Sausage Factory. Mm. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Um, I think they changed the name. It was an MTV show that was shooting here. It's such a good title. Why would they change that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sausage Factory. Hmm. Um, and so it was on. It's on that, and it was just like a one-line walk-on role. And I just remember I was like. This, insanely nervous and yeah and I was like I think I was about 16 when I booked that so yeah so yeah. was so let, I mean your climb to where you are now did it start like you said you had one line first on the sausage factory and then mm -hmm. did you jump right to you know booking guest stars right away or what was the what was your yeah. journey like no definitely not um I like I did one like, go out for one liners like mm. all the time. Like I, I booked leads now, and I, 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 you know, all those kind of things. But I will not say no to a one line. I'm not, I'm not turning that down. Like work is work, you know. Maybe that one line will lead to like a couple more days on set, or meeting somebody, or connecting with somebody, or the producer. You never know. So I'm not one of those people that will like poo poo the smaller roles yeah. at all. There's no small parts or whatever that line is. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Exactly. Only small actors. Exactly. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Do you wish that, like, you know, I had this battle coming out from New York and leaving college and, and everyone wants to book right away. Everyone wants to be the guy that doesn't have to, or the girl that doesn't have to go to university and just gets like picked up, you know, at the coffee shop. Did you ever kind of like resent the journey that you were on or what is your understanding of your whole journey? You know what I mean? Like, from from leaving it from leaving it for so long and then coming back like what have you learned about yourself you know well yeah I mean if I it would be a totally false thing to say if I said that I didn't have regrets because I absolutely do there's things that I should have done I like I messed around for so long I made terrible decisions I you know was partying too much I was being destructive I was self-sabotaging like I wouldn't show up to callbacks because I was out drinking the night before so like you know having that kind of experience with where I was which was like totally self-destructive to where I am now I look at my journey and I'm like really proud of myself I'm like oh my god that's like so happy that that is behind me but I also like you know you can't help but be like, oh, I wish I had my crap together because I feel like I would be so much further than I am right now. But at the same time, maybe that wasn't my journey. This is where I'm going and I'll use all that life experience in my craft. So right. that's all I can really use it for, right? right. So <laughs> It becomes a, a training school in its own, you know what I mean? Learning, yeah. learning on the ground, you know, and, and learning on set. That's, yeah, exactly. That's really I think I, It also makes me realize, like, I'm never going to like quash or squash another opportunity like I did before where there were doors that were open to me and because of my actions I I, I wasn't able to you know see them out so now it's like I, everything that comes to me or every opportunity or every chance I'm much more I think I'm much more of a go-getter and much more of a hustler now mm -hmm. than I was before I was kind of waiting for things to happen to me right 
industry. And not <laughs> in this industry. Like yeah, not this in this industry. I was like, when will my break come? Here we go. Yeah, the phone will ring not... any minute now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's so interesting, you know, like kind of what the modern actor is, is for rising actors, rising artists, people in the beginning of the careers, also people like like me, you know what I mean? Like just, you know, not at that level yet, but but hopefully going to be there soon, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're like a working actor. Right, so. a working yeah. actor. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what would you, I, is it something that just like, did you have like a certain situation that kind of woke you up? It was like a, you know, a kind of life or death thing? Or was it just like, do you think maturity just has a huge role to play in all this? I think maturity is like, well, I mean, I mean, everybody has those moments, I think, where you're by yourself and you're looking at the mirror and you're kind of like taking an account of your life and where you are and what you're doing. And you have to like, finally take a step back and look at yourself and be like, what is going to happen next for me? Like, nobody is going to give me these opportunities if I want this. You know, I teach acting, and um, to the young kids that come to my class, the young students, before I begin, and I know this sounds like kind of a weird thing to say, but before we begin, I say, if there's anything else that you can do with your life, go do that. If you feel like this is... You know, just like you're just trying it out or maybe it'll be like, you know, something fun. It's like, no, you need the people that are all in. Like, because this is not an easy road to take. So, you know, if, if you if this is like live or die, you can't imagine yourself doing anything else, then yeah, stay. If not, you should you should go. Do any kids get up and leave? Have, 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 have. No, nobody's got up and left, but I think that hopefully makes people think about the kind of sacrifice that you have to take to want to be in this industry. Yeah, you know? absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, talk about um, kind of what's it like being an actress in Vancouver? You know, um, it's interesting. Um, it's there's a lot of productions here. Um, we are Hollywood North, and so we've got about at the moment we've probably got. 40 productions going. Um, so all the CW shows shoot here. We have a lot of Hallmark movies that shoot here. Um, you can be a busy working actor. Like it, it's very, very possible. You can make a really good living here. That being said, there are times where I know that I've gone out for shows um, or for big parts that they are just, they're putting these auditions out because they have to, but these roles are going to LA actors. And so there is a, I feel like there's a point here where you can take your career, but at some point you do, do have to go to Los Angeles. Um, that being said, you'll probably go to LA and then get flown up here for work. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. <laughs> you know, so true. It's, it's, yeah, so it's interesting. Like where, I mean, for me, I'm happy to be like the best friend or like the side girl, the guest star for a while, but that's. I have higher ambitions than that. So, I mean, if I'm going out for a part where I know they're already booking someone from LA, I'm putting so much work into this audition. It's kind of frustrating to me. And it's frustrating to the whole community here. Like all my actor friends feel exactly the same. Right. So, you know, it's, it, it's a weird battle where, you know, moving to LA is a thing that I've always wanted to do, but a lot of people here, they're just happy to, to you know, to, to make a good living and, and to be the, Gas stars, I guess you could right. say. Right. Yeah. You know, when I did my show in Toronto, I felt like it, I think, oh man, I, I think it's a it's a blessing in disguise to be able to be in a smaller city like Toronto or Vancouver, not LA or New York, and yeah. you know, uh, you know, gain your chops there. Um, huh. I felt like, you know, I felt not that I was sheltered, but it was like there's no other Hollywood. It's not Hollywood. You know what I mean? It was like I could grow here and the city revolves not just around the industry you know i live in la and every five seconds down i can drive down the street and i can see a friend of mine that got a role that i would have went like you know would have loved to get or or my god like that went to that guy and and you know you can kind of get your head just so like wrapped up around that and i felt like being in toronto was just a great way to grow and i would have loved to keep doing the show there and then come back to la kind of just like a little tougher and a little like ready to handle that. Do you feel like you're getting that um, that education in Va Vancouver? Like, you know what I mean? Smaller than being in Hollywood. Is there benefits to that? 
there is two sides to that mm, coin. Okay. So uh, the thing is, is like, yes, it's a small, smaller industry here. And yes, Vancouver actors, that's when they do go to LA, they have stacked resumes. Because we have like stacked resumes with thing, with like big budget shows and big network shows that like maybe you wouldn't get those opportunities in LA because there's so many people. Mm. So yes, there's that advantage. But also there is about six casting directors here, mm. I'm going to say. Those are literally the gatekeepers to your career. They cast everything. So that is very difficult because what happens here is that they end up just casting the same people over and over and over again. And it's really, really hard to break in in that respect. It's a very, like, very, like, small-knit little community where you have to, like, just, like, chip away to get in. And then what happens is when one starts booking you for some reason that's when like it just starts to tumble and things start to happen but i mean in los angeles there's hundreds of casting directors there's still so many people. opportunities yeah. mm -hmm. it's it's insane so to have only like six or seven people literally be the ones that hold your career in your hands is kind of it's very frustrating for a lot of people right god you yeah. know it was, it was perfect that you chose to talk about you know balance in this industry yeah. because just talking for the last 15, 20 minutes, I'm already getting, I'm understanding what you mean by finding the balance in the industry just yeah. because of location alone or something and, and those like six casting directors. So let's jump into that side of the conversation. How you were talking about, um, you know, auditions and, and the frustrations of, of seeing an LA actress book something that you went out yeah. for and you're just going through the motions. Yeah. You know, can you tell us a little bit more about that and, and how you find balance when you yeah. went out for the same role and you were right for it, but you didn't get it, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, well, I think that one of the big things was a, um, a mind shift for me, like a way of looking at auditions differently. And before it was like, you know, always going in and writing so much on it, putting so much self-worth, wanting them to like me or whatever it is. And I realized that those are things that I have no control over. And so, so to think about that is just, it's, it's pointless. There's, it's useless to me. So all I can do, what I can have control over is what I'm bringing to the audition and, you know, doing the work and having this opportunity to delve into a character going and getting to do what I love for like 10 minutes and then throwing the sides out and just letting it go because everything else after that, I don't have control over. Do you, actually, before, throw, do you actually throw your sides away? Yeah. Nice. Good for you. Throw them in the garbage as soon as I'm done or the recycling, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah. and yeah, yeah, after that, I, I mean, it took a long time for me to think like that because I was like come home and I'd mull over the audition and then I would like write in my diary and like, what did I do wrong? And write, and it's just, that's not helpful. You know, there's going to be a thousand reasons why you did or didn't get it. Like honestly. And there's like so much nepotism in this industry as well. It's like, like who you know and like whose daughter you are and whose son you are. Right. So just go in, do your work, and then, you know, make your own work on the side so that you feel fulfilled as an actor. Like always be hustling, always be doing the indies, the short films, write something, shoot something, so that you're not writing so much on that one audition. And that's really where I found that I started to book auditions more as if I didn't go in having it be like oh my god this is everything i need to pay rent like because otherwise you know right. they're, they're gonna sense that they smell your fear absolutely. like you know <laughs> absolutely i mean it's just like it's just like constricting something oh my connection is poor Okay, we're good. Connection was poor for a second. I, I you know, I, I feel like on that note that it, it exactly that when you're when you're writing on that one audition, I mean, I feel like you're just you're just suffocating that. You know what I mean? And you've got to let it breathe. I had another guest talking about that, and she was basically talking about like how it's like a closed fist, and nothing can get through that. Basically, the audition, you know, the wanting it so bad, and until you open that fist, things can start coming through. Your career can start to flourish. The universe starts, you know giving yeah. you, you know, recognizing that and, and it comes. And I've also found that when I've kind of got my hands in different projects, work begets work. And I'm also yeah. going in those auditions and it's like, 
I don't need, I almost forget that I had this audition. So that kind of relaxes me. And it's like, after this, I'm actually going to go to a rehearsal. So it's cool if you don't, you know what I mean? And, and you're right. They smell that. And I think, um, I think that they appreciate, casting directors appreciate that attitude of just kind of being there and not being like, I need this, I need this, I need this. Yeah, it's okay. Like major feedback. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You're good. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think that like, when you're going to these auditions and you, you know, you've got other things on the go and you're not thinking about it in the way of like live or die, then you can go in and you can just have fun and actually like play in the room. And then when that happens, that's when you, you know, I used to think of auditions as this like like foreboding like oh my god I'm so nervous and all that kind of stuff and now when I get it I, I'm excited and I'm like super pumped to go in and I'm not even thinking about if I'm going to get the role anymore because that's just kind of you know it's just what can I bring to this character and also I used to do it where I would be worried about what they want oh I'm going to display what I think they want as opposed to how I see this character so I think that that's really important yeah there's freedom in that for sure yeah so, uh, you know, we are going through a really crazy time here in Hollywood uh, mm -hmm. with all the sexual harassment allegations. Um, you know, I, I personally feel that Hollywood is finally going through its re-education after 50 years plus of just garbage. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on everything that's happening right now? Yeah, I think it's... Um, it's about time. Yep. It's it's um it's kind of funny because I've even talking to um a lot of my guy friends that are actors and they um they didn't really realize how much this is happening. It's an imbalance, and it's, yeah. And and you know I I don't have one friend in my life who's a, a woman who whether it's in the industry or not that hasn't had something like that happened to her or had, you know, sexual advances that were unwanted or be actually physically abused. So the fact that this dialogue is happening is awesome and it's great. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely been part of the film industry for so long that to have this shaken up, I'm kind of interesting to see what will happen after and like how things will change. Cause I'm, I'm wondering if the pendulum might swing too far, which I know that sounds like I'm a feminist and everything. Like I know that, that sounds weird, but sometimes I feel like, um, just accusing with no, like, you know, making sure that all the facts are there and making sure that everybody is accountable for what actually happened. I think that that's really important. But the fact that this dialogue is starting, I think, is, is really important. I've definitely had stuff happen as well. So. Do you mind sharing a story or something? Um, yeah, actually, I, my first, it's kind of funny, it's my first time in L.A., meeting um with like casting and managers and it was many years ago and I wasn't in a place where I'm in now where I think I I wasn't ready for that yet um in my craft and also in my personal life just where my head was at I wasn't prepared for that yet but I went anyways and um I met with a, a casting director and he immediately said that he um, thought I was wonderful and that I was perfect and it's amazing and let's go out I'll take you out for lunch my red flags were kind of going off like right away and we did lunch and he was you know touching me inappropriately and then basically I'm not going to tell you all like the gratuitous parts of it with things that he said but basically he said that um, he would give me an apartment in Los Angeles um, I could move there if weekly he was able to come and have visits with me and that he would put me in his films if I did that and so I was like I kind of ran back to Vancouver with my tail between my legs from that experience and that was my first experience of Hollywood and so I was like oh my god is this what it's like and yeah oh my god man, that's that's really crazy so how did you man how did you kind of get past that first impression even that can be so scarring to someone who didn't I mean, you said you weren't even at that place mentally. I, I couldn't imagine someone who was even 
further back than you were at that age. You know what I mean? Like, how did you get through that whole time? Well, it made me think, I was like, how many women does this happen to? Because I'm obviously not the first, like, let me also, like, you know, preface this with that he was, like, 70 years old, so he's obviously been doing this for, like, a long time with, like, lots of girls. And I think about, you know, people that maybe, you know, didn't have a good family support back home or, you know, were running away from something or just, like, chasing their dreams and don't have any money would probably, you know, fall into that and be like, okay, well, maybe this is what I'm supposed to do. And it really made me think about those other girls. I had, you know, I was able to come back home. I was able to, you know, I have a good network here. And so that wasn't the problem. It was, uh, it really shook me up though. And it made me think about how much stronger I had to be as a person in order to withstand this industry. And you really do, because like, it will eat you up if you're not like, you know, really aware of your own self-worth. And like, what's okay and what's not okay. It's unfortunate that that has to be, it doesn't have to be a part of the, of the industry. It's unfortunate that it, it has been part of our industry, that that's something that, right, forever, right? That that's something that, you know, actresses, and I'm sure there's actors too that are just dealing with this nonsense. This is, you know, it's about acting, you know, and so much of Hollywood is convoluted in, in that side and, you know, the social media and all that other crap, basically. Um, for someone for someone listening right now who might be going through something like that, do you have any tips or um, advice to give them if they're dealing with something like that? If they're dealing with like some uh, Se- right sexual harassment or sexual advances un- oh, unwarranted, I, you know. I, I, um, well, I mean, this sounds terrible. But I think that if that was happening, this would be the best time for that to be happening to you because now people's voices are able to be heard. Like the floodgates are open. Like women are finally being you know, they're not afraid anymore. So I think that that's amazing. And, you know, people will listen now because as soon as it starts at that top, top tier with someone like Harvey Weinstein, that means that all the other chips will fall now and it's not going to be allowed anymore. I hope, I mean, I really hope that that's going to change the nature of our industry. And yeah, if you if you want your voice to be heard, like everyone now, everyone that is like, you know, good and wants us to change is like ready and like willing and open Listen even from vancouver there's um there's directors here that are being outed and we have a film festival right now yeah, yeah in, in the whistler and one of the directors is not even being allowed to go to his own uh film fest opening because um you know women are coming out and and explaining it so it's it's happening everywhere yeah yeah that's amazing, that's amazing. <laughs> um yeah so just it, sorry, I'm still shaking up about this whole thing, but you know, um, moving forward and talking about finding balance, just quickly, I mean, what do you do in your life to find balance? And, and do you completely kind of, do you have any hobbies? I know you're an acting teacher. Did that come out of kind of finding something to do other than just harping on auditions? And do you do anything else like fun hobbies? Oh, um, well, um, the acting and teaching was just, I mean, I feel like I learned so much from teaching and I really love being in that room. And I still, I mean, I still go to class myself as well. I think that you never, ever stop learning as an average. It's never, it's never like, oh, I know everything now. Right. Like, <laughs> you know, you're like, you're always growing as an actor. And that's why it's so often you'll never reach like, you know, the end of your knowledge. And so yeah. that's, uh, the acting teaching just came from, you know, wanting myself to have a side job that was wrapped up in my goals. Because, yeah. you know, you know, it's it's hard to, to you know, hustle and be like, you know, a server, work in a bar, all these kind of things. I'd rather do something where I feel like it's part of my community. Yeah. So that's been really cool. And you're giving back as well. Yeah. To the, to the next absolutely. generation, right. Yeah, it's so fun. It's so great. Like, I love that. And, um balance and hobbies in my life I mean I am like I'm trying to write a script so there's that I think that that just you know always working on side projects and always like doing short films and independent films and always doing that um I am a runner and I do yoga and like super active in Vancouver like this is like hiking central like outdoor enthusiast so like there's never you know something not to do like you can always do something here and like be outdoorsy but the weather right now is pretty dire it's pretty <laughs> <interesting>. <laughs> no i i love 
like, you know, LA has our little hikes and our thing too, you know what I mean? Um, and I think it's, you find balance sometimes in those moments where you're by yourself on top of a mountain and you just are speaking to whoever you speak to and you find that inner peace. Um, and I think if you're in a city that offers that, um, I think you're in a good place. I, I, I have a lot of conversations, you know, I'm from New York and I've had many conversations with people acting in New York and I'm just like, I don't know, this grind here, just like the people and the rain and the snow and the intensity of the city, I almost feel like it could be not knocking New York. I love New York. I'm from New York. But I, I find that it could just be a little harder to uh, to yeah. make it, almost unnecessary, you know, when you've got places like Vancouver or um, L.A., you know? Definitely. There is something about, like, going into nature and just kind of, like, regrouping and, like, you know, just, like, settling into yourself and what's important. And because it can get, like, you know, the hustle and everything can get to you. Absolutely. So taking a step back to, like, breathe and just, you know, recenter yourself is super important. Also, I think that um, for me, it's like I I will felt like really alone as an actor for a really long time. I was like kind of just out here on my own, like not really sure, like because not a lot of my you know friends were actors growing up, and some of my closest friends still aren't. But now I have this network of actors that wait like, whenever you know I have an audition or I like a, you know we need to rehearse something or a question or I like feel like down about something. They're there to to talk, and I think that's why what you're doing by making you know a, a podcast and a blog and just having like a, a network of people that we all want to help each other. Like it's not a competition game. Let's make it collaborative. Let's all work together because it's supposed to be. It's our community, right? Yeah. So I think having that really helps me balance as opposed to me against them kind of competition based, which is really, it's such a terrible way to think about it. So absolutely. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, I agree. Community is everything. And I'm finally with the modern actor. I'm finally being like, I want to embrace people and I want to be embraced. I'm not this lone wolf anymore, you know? Um, but that comes in time also. I, at one point in my career, I was like, no, I, you know, I was grilling everyone in the waiting room and no one was going to be better than me. And it's just so yeah. toxic and it's so tiring, you know? It, yeah. Right. yeah. Um, really quickly, I wanted to know, like, who are the top acting schools in Vancouver? Like, where do you go teach? I mean, um, like learn and take classes from. Um, so the top acting schools, um, there's one called Railtown Acting Studio. Um, they, they do um, amazing stuff where if you're getting sides or you're getting, um, I guess, scripts that are almost like you're putting on like a mini play. And the same with another studio, uh, Ben Ratner. It's the same thing. And when I went and studied with him, you're putting on these like huge pages of, uh, of theater scripts and you're staging them. And then so when you do get that film audition, that's like, you know, two pages or something, you're like, oh, this is a piece of cake. It's kind of because you're delving into this such deep character work that, you know, when you get that, you're like, where's my car? Like, script. You're like, everything's fine. This is totally easy. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, there's that. There's there's um, Railtown, Ben Ratner. Um, for, like, beginning actors, I'm just starting out. I found that who I studied with was Matthew Harrison at this place called The Actors Boundary. He has a very good grasp of how to approach the business and how to break down scripts and you know the whole audition process for people that you know have you know if they're just starting from the very beginning I think it's really great great like place to base base yourself right and yeah. what about your acting school what's your acting school called I'm interested oh um so it's a place called Rogues West so it's um Meisner based where I actually started in Meisner and uh in Montreal with this teacher uh Jacqueline McClintock she studied with Sanford Meisner um and she was amazing and so she kind of that was my first time doing Meisner and really delving into that kind of scary place where acting can go um she used to it was like this closed room that we would be in um, with like no windows and she would sit there and she'd smoke cigarettes the whole time, the whole class. And we're all just like, oh. and so she, she said this is like always stuck with me. She's like, to be an actor is standing up on stage in front of thousands of people, but naked and turning around slowly. 
And I was like, okay. And so mm-hmm. she's like, and it just made me think, I'm like, that's kind of like, you have to, you have to like expose yourself. And like, it was like, okay, I'm ready. Cause in the beginning, and I see so many actors come in and it's just like, they're holding everything to themselves. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, so that really made me realize that. And I was like, okay, so that's what you have to do yeah. to show the world who you are. Nice. And so that's what you're doing at your school? In your class? Um, we do we do Meisner. Um, we do scene study where um, it's like larger scenes um, like from plays. And then we also do um, on camera work and on camera audition and just kind of run the gamut. So That's great. yeah, it's a great place. And yeah. what's, what's the age group there? Um, oh, it's like anywhere. So we're going to be starting a teen class um, in the new year. I can't believe it's already like the end of the year. Um, <laughs> um, but I say right now it's from like 20 to like 60. There's like the whole the whole range of ages. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And, you're, and you're teaching. Yes. That's so yes. cool. That's really yes. cool. Man, I, you know, you're doing so much. How important or not important is it for you <laughs> to have like a daily routine? Oh, um, well... <laughs> I think it's important. Okay. Do I do I actually do a daily routine? No. I like try. I have like, you know, daily goals that I want to set and like daily things to set out. I think that even having that structure in my brain maybe makes me feel more structured, but generally like things can just go all over the place. Like, yeah. 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 But I do think that um, there's certain things that like I must do every day. So, you know, I think that like working out or like whatever you need to do, like if it's meditation or like going to the gym or doing yoga, at least having that one thing where you feel like I've taken a time for myself to like regroup. I'm a super nerd and I like, I'm like a voracious journaler or yeah. So I just kind of journal all the time and I like save them all in like a big chest over there. Oh, like it's like great. So cool. <laughs> they say that if you just put the things that are in your head onto a piece of paper, you already can de-stress and kind of calm down. Because yeah, when they float exactly. in your head, it, it can get, um, yeah, a, a little a little crazy, a little overwhelming. Yeah, yeah exactly. I started doing this thing where, um, I guess it's a thing now where gratitude can help like reshape your brain and help you know uh, shape the way that you see the world. And so every morning I try to write down at least one or two things that I'm grateful for. It could be like anything. And it just kind of makes you start the day with this nice positivity. It could be like, I'm grateful for the rain because it, you know, makes the, the, the wilderness so beautiful and lush and green and this rainforest we live in. Or I don't know, I'm grateful for my boyfriend because he's so caring and supportive. And that's it. Like two, two sentences and then the rest of the day I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That's really amazing. Yeah. I want to try that. That's actually really, really cool. Um, yeah. So let's move towards, we got to start wrapping up. Um, so I'm sure yeah. you're very busy. Uh, let's talk about um, your new film role on the Hallmark Channel. You're playing Amy. You want to oh, tell us a little yeah. about that? Yeah. Um, yeah, that was really fun. Actually, it's already premiered. It premiered last week, and it was one of the highest uh, uh, viewed Hallmark Channel movies. It was like 3.5 million viewers or something, which is awesome. Um, so that was really cool. I've had actually like a lot of people reach out to me and saying that they loved it, and they cried, and it was like really sappy Christmas movie. Nice. Um, <laughs> so nice. I think that will probably be on Netflix um soon i know that they put a bunch of their stuff on netflix um and then i also have um i think it's going to be airing in january um it's the i'm in the first episode of i zombie on the cw yep. so yeah. yeah so those are the those are the things that are coming down the barrel very cool so the hallmark movie what was it called the film finding santa finding santa and and jody sweeten was in it from full house i was yeah, a huge yeah. what was it like working with her did you guys have scenes really, together yeah. really cool yeah 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 like we, all my scenes were with her nice. i play like her old best friend from high school nice. and uh and she comes and stays at my house for a couple days um and christmas cheer ensues um but she she was really cool it was like it was kind of um weird because I realized that we were we were really close in age. Um, I'm 33 and she's 35. And when I was chatting with her, I realized I was like, I grew up watching you. But like, so while I was like a little kid, like, you know, being snot nose, like little kid and just playing with my friends, you were on a TV show 
working. And it just, just kind of like, I was like, wow, that must have been such a bizarre experience. And you just realize how long that these people that we've known for so long, that have been on our lives for so long, have been working. And that was really interesting to her. Because she's lovely. She's really great. That's really so, cool. Yeah. What, yeah. what was the most challenging thing about playing Amy? Amy? Yeah. There was Thing challenging about Amy, like yeah. just it was honestly the probably one of the most lovely sets I've ever been on. Uh, the director was the director named David Winning, and it was like everybody was smiling, everybody was happening from like the grips to like the hair ladies. It was just this wonderful environment to be in. So, and he was the kind of director where he would just let you do what you want to do and then he would come up and do like the smallest little tweak and just be like just like this like a small little thing so we always already like appreciated what you were doing and it was and then just you know tiny little things just to help and it was amazing do yeah. you prefer when directors are kind of hands-on pardon me do you prefer when directors are hands-on you know what i mean Absolutely. where they collaborate Oh yeah, yeah. I, that that's like super super important. I mean, as actors, you always want to know too if what you're doing is what they want. Right. You know, I mean, like a little bit of feedback is super helpful. Sometimes you don't get anything from directors, and you're like, is this is this cool? What is this doing here? Yeah, like, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> hands up or anything. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So do you? I, well, I was gonna ask, do you still get um kind of butterflies when you watch yourself on TV? Do you uh? What's that feeling like? Um, no, I mean, I don't get butterflies. I don't like it. I know that that's, like, it's weird. Like, I'm just like, ah. But it's important, I think, to watch your own work. Mm -hmm. I, I do. I think it's, it's really important to, like, see, especially, like, even in class, and mm -hmm. so that you can see maybe, like, the things that aren't working for you or, like, your tells, like, to, to tell when you're, like, you know, not invested in the scene. I think it's really important. Um... But I don't get butterflies unless it's like a role where I wasn't proud of the performance on the day and I knew I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'm worried I'm worried that maybe I didn't maybe I didn't trust the the director um, enough to choose the edit, you know, because you never really know right. what they're gonna edit or what, what take they're gonna do, you know. Right. So <laughs> if I didn't if I don't feel like I, I did a good performance on the day, that's when I'm that's when I'm like, oh, I don't really want to watch that. <laughs> do you go back to the monitor to see like your performance or playback? Do you ask to see playback, or are you just in the moment? No, no, I don't like to see that. Yeah. Um, I think that that takes me out of it. it I, I, too, I yeah. Just, yeah, I don't like that because then I'll start as a woman. I'll start judging the way I look physically. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll be like, oh, I look so gross today, or my hair's weird, or whatever, and I don't want that to be a factor in the work. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather not watch until there's nothing I can do about it. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and um, has this opportunity, has this role, um, kind of given you any other opportunities yet, or is it more of like a confidence building thing? The, the Hallmark one? Yeah, the Hallmark, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, well, it's definitely got me back in the room with the casting director many times since then, which is awesome. So just knowing and having that support from, like, a new casting director, it was the first time I've ever seen her, mm -hmm. and it's the first time I've ever booked anything with her, so that was awesome. That's great. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so just having that has opened up new doors. Um, I've actually gotten a lot of... Um, people writing to me which has never really happened before people writing on my website you know just saying that they really liked it and they're asking for autographs and things like that yeah, so that's really cool yeah, and like yeah. that's never really happened before so that's really nice to like have that support even just from my friends and family but then also people that are viewers it's it's really great to see so yeah nice. yes yeah. <laughs> um and what advice would you give an aspiring actor what advice would i give yeah if you had a megaphone and you can talk your piece about acting, what would you say? Um, I'd say don't don't wait. Like, just go and do it now. Like, for so long, I wanted to be perfect or I wanted to have all these chips in the row before I could, you know, just go and do it. And it's like, just get out there, start creating, start making, hustle, believe in yourself, and, you know, just... If you just push yourself and, you know, it'll, it'll happen. I know that that sounds, that sounds weird. Even if it's just like the, the small little roles or the short films or the indies or creating your own stuff, you just get that ball rolling, then other things will come.
that's very cool. Yeah. And what do you love about acting? Um, I like, I really like storytelling. I think that, I think that that's what I love the most and to delving into characters that aren't me, um, you know, fi but finding myself in them and really like, you really realize how much we're all connected and just, yeah, just exploring that, exploring characters is like my favorite thing. And then also just like meeting people and like having those connections because you never know what's going to happen. It's it's really cool. I know that LA is a very uh, networky type of place and all that kind of stuff. We don't really have that industry here, I find. Like it's not really like a place to network. So whenever I do work on something, it's just such an awesome opportunity to like meet other people in this industry and, you know, explore new avenues together. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Thank you so much for for being on, you know, and, and, and talking about all these important issues. It's really, yeah. really awesome. I was going to ask, um, was there anything that I failed to ask about, you know, finding balance in the industry? Any Anything you want to add? No, I don't think that you asked all the right questions. Um, yeah, I just think it's... It comes with it comes with knowing yourself and like knowing what you want and knowing your own values and and standing up for them and then yeah just creating your own little place in this industry I think is is what you have to do. That's perfect. That's perfect. Laura yeah. Mitchell, where can our listeners find more about you? Um, you can find me on I have a website which is kind of in the works. But it's lauramitchellactor.com. So apparently there's a lot of Laura Mitchells that in the world. Is so. too. I couldn't get it either. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can find me on Instagram. It's runaway.charlie. It's, uh, it's not my name, but there's that. And then IMDb. And uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll give you all those links. Yeah, all the links to the acting school too. So anybody in Vancouver that's looking for a class, Absolutely. they can come to your school. Absolutely. I'll give you the links to that as well, for perfect, sure. Perfect. Thank you so much for reaching out. I'm so glad you did because I really enjoyed talking. And um, thank you so much for just sharing everything oh. on these issues. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I'll talk to you later, Laura. Thanks. Okay, bye. Bye.